Hello, in this video, we will be solving a marketing advertising mix problem by writing it as a linear program, which we will then solve in Excel using a package called Solver. Our goal will be to maximize return on investment subject to meeting a minimum number of conversions as well as a number of other uh, advertising mix constraints that we are trying to take into account. We are considering the options of search ads, Facebook, YouTube ads, and Gmail ads. If you have other categories, you may certainly add those in. And based on past data, we are assuming we've collected information about how much we spent, how many clicks we got, how many conversions, and then the total revenue from those sales or conversions. With that data, we can compute a cost per click in terms of the total dollars we spent divided in a category or on a platform divided by the number of clicks we received. The number of conversions that we got then leads us to the number of conversions we got per dollar spent. And then lastly, we can compute the ROI by looking at the total revenue minus what we spent divided by the total amount that we spent. If you have all this information, the information in green, then you can do all these calculations. If you don't have all this information, then you just have to do the best that you can. If we wanted to um, maximize the number of clicks, then looking at minimizing the cost per click might be the way to go. Uh, or we could compute it the other way and look at the number of clicks per dollar. We could maximize clicks, but more than clicks, we care about the number of people who actually buy things. So we might wanna to try to maximize the number of conversions that we get per dollar we spend. But really what we wanna do is make as much money as possible. So if we have the revenue from each of these previous uh, efforts, then we can compute the, the ROI. And that is the thing that we, of course, most care about. All right, let's try to write this as a linear program. We're trying to maximize return on investment. And one of our constraints is that we only have $40,000 available to spend. However, we have decided for mix reasons um, to spend at least $4,000 on YouTube and at least $2,000 advertising in Gmail. And we want to get at least 2,000 conversions, at least 2,000 sales. We also feel like Facebook should be more than YouTube. And we want the search to be at least 10% of our total spending. And between Facebook and YouTube, we feel like those two together should represent at least 50% of our total. We're going to use X1 as the dollars we spend on Facebook ads, X2 as the dollars on search ads, X3 as the dollars on YouTube ads, and X4 as the dollars we spend on Gmail. So how do we write these constraints? Well, some of them are pretty straightforward. Maximizing return on investment. We know from that spreadsheet that we a return on investment for X1 is $20.87, $12.58 for X2, etc. The total spending has to be less than or equal to $40,000. So we just add up the amounts of spending in each of these four categories. That has to be less than or equal to $40,000. The amount we spend on YouTube, X3, has to be at least $4,000. Spending on Gmail, X4, has to be at least $2,000. And then the total number of conversions has to be at least 2,000. So to find the number of conversions, we take the amount we spend on each category and multiply that by the number of conversions we receive per dollar spent on advertising. And so that's how we make sure that we get at least 2,000 conversions. So all of those are pretty straightforward, but the remaining constraints um, take a little bit more discussion. So you could call them percentage constraints, you could call them ratio constraints. There are a lot of things you could call them but let's look at them. It's easy to say the amount we spend on Facebook should be greater than or equal to the amount we spend on YouTube. We could just say X1 is greater than or equal to X2. But in order to be able to solve this in Solver, we have to write it out in so-called standard form where we have all the variables on one side of the inequality sign and then only constants on the other side. And when we have it like this, this is obviously not in standard form. But if we subtract X2 from both sides, that's in standard form. The search greater than or equal to 10%, um, we have to do just a little bit more. We can say the amount we spend, X2, has to be greater than or equal to 10% times the total spending across all categories. So this captures what we're trying to say here. The amount we spend on X2 has to be greater than or equal to the total spending 
but obviously this is also not in standard form. So to get that into standard form, we subtract 0.1 times x1, 0.1 times x2 off both sides, and that leaves us with this. We get negative 0.1 x1 uh, and negative 0.1 on all, for all of the coefficients except for x2, because x2 was being multiplied by 1 here. And we subtract off 0.1 x2, and we're left with 0.9 x2. So that's how we handle the search constraint. The constraint that Facebook plus YouTube together have to be at least 50% of the total, we handle in exactly the same way. We say this total spending across these two categories has to be greater than or equal to 50% times the total amount that we spend. And then we just do the same thing, subtracting the whole right side from the left side. And again, you can see X1 and X3, the two things on the left side, they have positive coefficients of 0.5. And the other two variables have coefficients of negative 0.5. This gives us then our final form of the linear program where we have all of our constraints uh, listed here. And then I hadn't mentioned it yet, but non-negativity, none of these variables are allowed to have negative numbers. I really don't know what it would mean to spend negative $10,000 on YouTube advertising, for example. So let's turn to Excel and figure out how to put this into Excel. You can see on the top here, I have all of those uh, pieces of information that we were using to drive this calculation. So these ROI numbers here, I am using them right here in my formulation of the objective function. Our objective function is maximizing profits and we are taking the ROI in each category and multiplying it by the 25,000 or however many dollars we're spending in that particular category. So to calculate this result, we use the formula called sum product, where we take these four numbers and multiply them by these four numbers one at a time and then sum up the total. This number here is not the optimal answer. It's one I just made up trying to find a number that might be good. Um, more about that in a second. The rest of my expression here these are just the coefficients from the linear program that I had written out a minute ago. So we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. Those add up to 40,000, and that has to be less than or equal to 40,000. So here on the left side of the inequality, I'm using some product again, where I'm taking the product of these four numbers and the four uh, values of my variables that I'm currently looking at those as the being the possible answer. So like I said, I was just trying to come up with an answer that might work and it satisfies most of the constraints, except search is not 10%. Okay, so I didn't do a very good job just trying to find an answer by myself, but that's okay. This is what solver is supposed to do for me anyway. So I click on data and then I click on solver and then I get this pop-up box. So I enter the profits that I'm trying to maximize, that cell address in this box. I say I'm maximizing, and then here I tell it the, the location of those cells in yellow. And then I have these two constraints. The first one is less than or equal to, that's the budget constraint. And then as it happens, all the rest of my constraints ended up being greater than or equal to constraints. So it was easy to add those all in, in one chunk. Then I check this box, which forces all of the variables to not be negative. And then we are using the simplex algorithm. So I selected that from this drop down menu, and then we hit solve. And here's what we get we get that my original answer was going to bring us profits of 668, which isn't bad, but we can actually get 735 with the optimal answer. And so the optimal thing is to do 30,000 in Facebook, 5,000 in search. 4,000 on YouTube and 2,000 on Gmail. And then we can see the information about each of the constraints here. Some of the constraints are binding. We are using all of the budget that we were allowed to use. We are doing the bare minimum on YouTube and the bare minimum on Gmail. Um, we had to get at least 2,000 conversions and we have 5,585. So that constraint is not binding and we have actually a slack the difference between what we got and the constraint. The constraint was 2,000, so the slack is that difference, and it's 3,585. Uh, and then um, let me just say one thing about this value right here. 
um, the search is um, uh, supposed to be on that constraint, it said greater than or equal to zero. And, and we have a number that says zero, but then it's in parentheses, which means that the number is actually negative. And we told it it's supposed to be greater than or equal to zero. What's actually happened there is if you look at the options we set, we said the precision is 0 0.00001, which means that if something is within that much or less of, of a number, uh, Excel just treats it like it's that particular number. And as we'll see in the next slide, that value is not zero, but it's 0, 0.00, like 13 decimal places before we get to the first number. So it's, it's technically a negative number, but it's so close to zero that it, it doesn't matter. So there is that number, negative 4.5 times 10 to the minus 13th. It's a very small number. This is the sensitivity report. And um, it tells us again, the optimal amount to do of each decision variable. And then it tells us the objective coefficient, how much we uh, benefit from each one of those uh, variables, how much from the spending on that. And then this increase and decrease tell us how much we would have to change these objective coefficients before the optimal decision would change. So for the objective coefficient, the allowable increase is 1e plus 30, which is Excel's way of writing infinity. So we could increase that 20 0.87, we could increase it up to $5,000 and this would not change. However, if we decreased it by more than $8.29, for example, if we decreased it by $10 and made the objective coefficient $10.87, that would change the answer and we don't know what the answer would be. If we wanted to know the profits under that scenario, we would have to just change the objective coefficient in our original spreadsheet and run solver again. Why do we care about this? it lets us know how carefully we have to know these quantities because someone has estimated these based on past experience. And if we were to discover that the answer was very susceptible to small changes in these parameters, we would wanna make sure that we really had estimated these uh, through a process we really trusted. Now, in our case, the, the allowable increase and decrease are, are quite significant. So we should have a lot of confidence that this answer really is, is the proper thing to do. Then looking at the constraints, um, we can see what the right-hand side of the constraint said. We can see what we actually ended up coming up with. And um, um, the one thing I'll point out here is the shadow price, which tells us how much the objective function would change for each unit change of the right-hand side. So we have a budget of $40,000. For every additional dollar we had a budget, the objective function would go up by $20. If we take away a dollar, the objective function would go down by $20. And this, if we decrease it by more than 25,000, then we don't know what would happen. But for any increase or decrease within this range, the net impact is this big. We notice on Gmail spending, um, we're only spending 2,000. And for every unit we would increase that by, profits would go down by $16 because we would have to send more marketing dollars to Gmail advertising, which is not our most, um, most profitable uh, venue. So to summarize, we looked at a advertising mix problem as a linear program. We were trying to maximize return on investment. Uh, if you had other goals, if you didn't have enough data to do, be able to maximize ROI and you wanted to maximize clicks or maximize number of sales, we could do that, but we have the data in this case to maximize ROI, so that is what we're going to do. We looked at four categories, Facebook, Search, YouTube, and Gmail. If you have other categories, it's easy to add more categories, just add, uh, add more variables, more columns to our spreadsheet. Uh, and we looked at a number of constraints, including a, a total budget constraint and then minimum amounts in different categories. And then we had these ratio or mix or percentage constraints where Facebook had to be more than YouTube search had to be at least 10% of the total, and Facebook and YouTube together had to be at least 50% of the total. I hope this has been helpful.